This watch can measure blood pressure directly at the wrist. This is the new Huawei Watch D2 and this smartwatch has a built-in air cushion in the strap that inflates to measure blood pressure. At least that's the theory. In today's video you will find out how accurate this type of blood pressure measurement actually is, what else the Huawei Watch D2 has to offer and for whom it is the right choice. So let's get started, have fun. Usually blood pressure is measured with an arm cuff. The cuff fills with air until it is tight against the arm, briefly stopping blood flow. The device then measures two pressures, systolic and diastolic. Systolic pressure is measured when the heart beats and pumps blood through the arteries, while diastolic pressure is measured when the heart fills with blood during its resting phase. This results in a blood pressure reading of for example 120 over 80. Both of these values are measured by inflating and deflating the cuff. The downside of these devices is that they are quite bulky and heavy, so it's not very easy to carry them around. Some smartwatches like the Samsung Galaxy watches also offer a blood pressure feature, but in my experience their measurement is often unreliable. They do not use a traditional blood pressure cuff, but rather LED lights, similar to how these watches also measure heart rate. Additionally, you need to calibrate the watches with a blood pressure cuff before the first measurement and then recalibrate it every 28 days. However, the Huawei Watch D2 is a smartwatch that can be comfortably worn on the wrist, but it also has a built-in cuff that inflates. When we start the blood pressure measurement it inflates until the blood flow is briefly interrupted and then the air is released just like a traditional blood pressure cuff. This measurement is not uncomfortable as it might be with an arm cuff so you definitely feel the air cushion inflating but it's not unpleasant. But how accurate is it? I have now measured my blood pressure every day for 30 consecutive days using both the watch and a traditional arm cuff and then compared the values. Here you can see some of the results. Sometimes I tested my blood pressure in the morning, sometimes in the evening and just under various conditions. The deviation between the smartwatch and the blood pressure monitor was mostly between 3 and 5% which is perfectly fine for me. In my case, these values are within the normal healthy range. If the values for you are significantly higher, it's essential to see a doctor regardless of the measurement method used. But for me personally, according to my experience, the Huawei Watch D2 is accurate and yields results similar to an arm cuff. You can either manually start the measurement by clicking measure or you can activate an automatic 24 hour monitoring plan where the blood pressure is measured at intervals throughout the day and night, which you can set yourself. For people who need or want to monitor their blood pressure regularly, the Huawei Watch D2 is certainly a great choice. However, you should be aware that it definitely differs from other smartwatches, especially in terms of its build and comfort. First off, the strap is thicker because it contains the air cushion. For the blood pressure measurement to function properly, the strap also has a different fastening mechanism, which makes it less comfortable on the wrist compared to other bands. Additionally, the case itself is significantly thicker than other smartwatches. Most smartwatches are around 10 mm thick while the Huawei Watch D2 is already 13.3 mm thick without the sensor on the back. This is mainly due to the small holes in the case through which air is pumped into the cuff. Furthermore, at 48 times 38 mm it's not the smallest watch and at 85 grams it's also noticeably heavier than other smartwatches. I must say that the comfort of wearing this watch isn't really the best. So especially in the first few days of using it, I found it quite uncomfortable, especially while sleeping and during activities where I bent my wrist a lot like weight training. I got used to it after a few days, but the comfort is still not the best. But honestly, with this watch, functionality takes precedence over comfort. In terms of materials, the watch is mostly made of aluminum. Aluminum is a very lightweight material compared to stainless steel, for example, which helps prevent the watch from being heavier than it already is, while also ensuring it is robust and of high quality. The strap, aside from the air cushion, is made of Roro Elastomer in the black option I chose, but there is also a gold option with a white leather strap. To ensure accurate blood pressure measurement, the strap must fit properly. You receive a leaflet with all the necessary information and on the inside of the strap you'll find small numbers to help you adjust it correctly. Here you can also see the best position for taking blood pressure measurements. 
The Huawei Watch D2 is not just a blood pressure monitor, it's also a highly functional smartwatch. It features a 1.82 inch AMOLED display with a resolution of 480 x 408 pixels. The watch is operated via touch, but there are also two buttons on the right edge of the case, with the upper button also functioning as a rotating crown. The operation is very smooth and the interface is essentially the same as on other recent Huawei watches, such as the Watch Fit 3, GT5 or GT5 Pro. First of all, we have this extra widget for blood pressure measurement alongside familiar widgets found on other Huawei watches as well. For example, there is a health overview where you can see important health data at a glance, including the heart rate trend at the top. You can click on this to see more details. Below, there are tiles for stress levels, blood oxygen saturation, so the SpO2 value, and sleep. Regarding sleep, the watch displays sleep duration, quality, breakdown of sleep phases, as well as respiratory rate, heart rate, and blood oxygen saturation. There's also another tile for blood pressure here, one for guided breathing exercises and a so-called health glance widget, which briefly checks all important health data in a simple 90 second test. You can find additional widgets by pressing the upper button from the home screen. The watch also offers skin temperature measurement and most importantly an ECG measurement, allowing you to record an electrocardiogram directly at your wrist. Using the ECG, the watch can also measure arterial stiffness, which provides insights into the elasticity and health of your arteries. However, you should never rely solely on the watch for such matters and should always consult your doctor in case of doubt. However, it's certainly impressive how many health features the watch D2 offers beyond blood pressure measurement. When it comes to sports and fitness features, the watch has a lot to offer as well. You can see the fitness ranks with activity data and weekly views, as well as all other details and graphs. In training mode, there are many different profiles, including unique sports like Taekwondo, street dance, or even bungee jumping. However, there is no triathlon mode, nor are there modes for swimming and diving. During workouts, the watch can track duration, distance, pace, steps, and heart rate, as well as calculate your aerobic and anaerobic training load. Advanced running metrics like running balance, vertical oscillation, and ground contact time, features you would find on the Huawei Watch GT5 Pro, are not available on the Watch D2. However, it does include a smart companion feature where you can set a target pace and see how much you exceed or fall short of it. You can also set goals such as burning a specific number of calories and set reminders such as a heart rate zone to maintain during a workout. You will receive notifications when you exceed or drop below this zone. There is an auto pause feature, the ability to create interval workouts via the watch and through the app you can load specific fitness or running courses and training plans onto the watch as well. Additionally, you can use audio guidance during your workouts, there is a separate always on mode for training and some sports have automatic workout detection. Most notably, you can also load routes onto the watch and navigate based on them during your workouts, which is certainly impressive for a smartwatch. And you can also utilize a backtrack feature. After workout, you will see the key data and statistics, including various graphs and bars, and especially in the app you'll have a better overview. Beyond training mode, there is also a widget for long-term training analysis. This shows the so-called running ability index, allowing you to see your running performance compared to other runners, your training load, a training index, your recovery, VO2 max value, and forecasts for different running distances. We've already discussed the accuracy of the blood pressure measurement of the Huawei Watch D2, but how accurate is the watch other than that? One of the most central statistics here is the heart rate. The Watch D2 uses the same optical heart rate sensor as the GT5 and GT5 Pro, but the design also affects heart rate accuracy, which, as discussed, is somewhat different here. In my experience, the smartwatch was definitely accurate while running. The heart rate data aligns very well with the chest strap, as do the average and maximum heart rate values. During strength training, the there were expectedly larger deviations, but the results were still above average in accuracy when looking at the curves, as well as the average and maximum heart rates. In the last weeks, I found that the Huawei Watch GT5 Pro also has a very accurate heart rate measurement. The Watch D2 was somewhat less accurate than the GT5 Pro, but still significantly more accurate than many other smartwatches. I also checked how accurately the Huawei Watch D2 records GPS data, as this is crucial for things like distance and pace. 
I was also very satisfied with the watch in this regard. In the city, it accurately tracks my routes, not cutting any corners and reliably reflects the path I ran. Even in the forest where I always run back and forth on a narrow forest trail, the watch tracks my route very well as the outward and return paths align closely. In terms of GPS accuracy, the Huawei Watch D2 in my experience is above average for a smartwatch. Finally, let's talk about battery life. The Huawei Watch D2 lasts up to 6 days with typical usage. Huawei also specifies the exact conditions under which this is achieved, including 6 blood pressure measurements per day, 30 minutes of calls per week and an average of 90 minutes of activity recording per week. I personally record significantly more activity, so for me it's more like 90 minutes per day and not per week, and during my testing I measured blood pressure way more than 6 times a day, and for me the watch lasted somewhere around 4 to 5 days, which is still more than acceptable for me, as with this battery life the watch still outperforms most other smartwatches. If you activate the 24 hour automatic blood pressure measurement where blood pressure is measured every 15 minutes, the battery life is understandably reduced. In this case the watch lasts only about one day. However, that's a trade-off you'll likely be willing to accept if you rely on regular blood pressure measurements. Alright, so what can we conclude about the new Huawei Watch D2? In my opinion, it's a very good smartwatch for those who want or need to measure their blood pressure without carrying a bulky blood pressure monitor with an arm cuff. Based on my experience, the watch is very accurate and reliable for blood pressure measurement, unlike smartwatches that measure using LED lights. While the watch is quite thick, heavy and bulky with less than ideal comfort, those looking to measure their blood pressure regularly with it will likely overlook these aspects in light of its functionality. Additionally, the watch offers much more. It has a right range of features, is high quality and robust, provides solid battery life and is accurate in terms of GPS and heart rate measurement. So feel free to leave a comment down below what you think of the new Huawei Watch D2. If you found this video helpful or interesting, you could really support me and my work here by giving this video a quick thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any future videos, you should definitely subscribe to this channel as well. But for now, thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.